All right, so this video is called the Haitian and Latin American Revolutions. We're gonna start with the Haitian Revolution because uh, it's, it's kind of a unique situation. So originally Haiti was a very prosperous French colony that sold sugar, had the sugar plantations like we talked about a couple units ago. They had a ton of slaves and it wasn't called Haiti, it was called San Domingo, all right? It had a class system or hierarchy, a way to structure the social classes. So you had the first one, which are the white planters, the plantation owners. The second one were the free people of color, all right? The third were the poor whites, and the fourth were the slaves. And so what the blue represents is the social class system. The red represents um, what they hated about being controlled by France. And all of that was kind of fueled by the French Revolution that we had just done. So the white planters hated that the French government were getting involved in their business and trying to make slavery life a little bit easier when they when the French or the white people really wanted to drive slavery to get production up of sugar. Um, the free people of color felt discriminated against um, because they didn't really have enough money to own slaves. They didn't ever ever rise up, I guess, to the next social class. Poor whites resented the class above them, the free people of color, because they had way less money than them. And then the slaves obviously resented slavery and everything about it because it's the most inhumane institution ever. So this kind of led to a slave revolt in San Domingo. In 1789, slaves heard rumors that the French king had freed them, and they eventually got wind of the Declaration of Rights of the Man and of the Citizen, that was the French Revolution Declaration of Independence, and it gave hope to all four groups of those people we just discussed. Um, and so in August 1791, there was a slave revolt Led, led by Toussaint Louverture. I can never say his name, so I wrote, wrote it out. Louverture, all right? Spanish and the British offered their support to that slave revolt because remember, the, they, you know, France was pretty much fighting everybody. And then France quickly realizes they weren't gonna be able to defeat the slave revolt, the British and the Spanish, so they just freed all the slaves. And, sin, and then so Louverture, he was working to gain freedom for the entire country um, but Napoleon eventually taken back over in France, and he wanted uh, San Domingo to be more profitable again, so he was going to start sending the French people, the French soldiers back over. So even though the French had freed all of the slaves and Louverture was working to make them an independent colony, Napoleon gains power after the French Revolution, and he wants to take back control of the colony and get that sugar production back up. Well, the only way to get that sugar production back up in San Domingo or San Domingo is to send his brother-in-law over and take back control and then reintroduce slavery. Obviously, that was not going to do very well, so they had to get rid of Louverture. So the French arrested him and imprisoned him in a French prison back in France, and he actually died in prison in 1803. The slaves then revolted against the French, and they started to fight the French soldiers who were there on behalf of Napoleon. And actually, they got really lucky because yellow fever killed a lot of French soldiers. Um, they had never been exposed to that disease before. And then Dessalines, who was a friend of Louverture, he uh, helped fight Louverture or helped fight with Louverture in a lot of battles, declared Haiti a free country on January 1st, 1804, after the, all the slaves had defeated um, the French soldiers. This was important for three reasons. One, it was the largest successful slave revolt ever, uh, maybe one of the most successful of all time. Two, second modern, uh, or it was the second modern country in the Americas, right? And then it was the first modern country to be governed completely by people who were of African descent. Um, a lot of the slaves at that point had been born in Haiti. And so they, after the revolt, were able to uh, take control of their own country. So let's take a quick look at other Latin American revolutions. Between 1750 and 1850, many of the Latin American countries that had previously been under Spain's rule or France's rule or the Portuguese rule became independent countries and gained their own freedom. Simón Bolívar played a large role um, in a lot of those efforts. The revolutions all across Latin America gained momentum um, from the words and thoughts of the Enlightenment. They had heard about all the revolutions happening all over the world and the fact basically remains that all the major countries in Europe were starting to fight each other, with, especially with Napoleon in power, and so they were kind of less focused on their colonies over in Latin America. So you couple these together, you had a lot of, a lot of um, momentum for revolution. So let's look at, for example, is Brazil. Napoleon took over Portugal. Portugal controlled Brazil. When Napoleon took over Portugal, 
the Portugal king and his family ran all the way over to Brazil to leave to escape Napoleon. And then Portugal was like, hey, we need our king back. Do you mind coming back? So the king decided to go back to Portugal, but he left his son in charge of Brazil, Prince Pedro. All right, so his son, Prince Pedro, was then convinced by the Brazilian people to make himself the king of Brazil, and they set up their own independent country, which was a constitutional monarchy. So it was a revolution that didn't really have a lot of bloodshed, which is kind of cool. Um, in Mexico, a couple of peasants' revolts kind of paved the way for a larger revolution that eventually gained their freedom from Spain. And then Venezuela, led by our boy Bolivar again, gained independence from Spain when he um, convinced Spanish supporters in Venezuela to fight against Spain, and then they eventually gained their freedom. And he really helps um, get a lot of other areas their own freedom and become countries. And in South America and Latin America, you began to see nation states form all over Latin America um, into the countries that you see today.